Hey guys, here's a quick look at JEP FD for iPad. Um, I have access to a Jeppesen subscription, and I kind of like Jeppesen charts better than the uh, the NOAA charts, so um, I was able to, to get this app and, and put the subscription on it, so um, I'm kind of evaluating it for uh, for the company that I work for, or we're trying to see about potentially doing um, the certification process to, to use iPads instead of paper charts, um, which is kind of neat to, to be on the on the leading edge of something like that. Not very many other operators are, have taken that step yet. So, um, when you first start up the Jeff FD app. Um, for the first time, you always have to download everything based on whatever your subscription is. Um, this covers the lower 48 states, uh, both low in route, high in route, terminal charts, and the manuals involved with the Jeppesen charts. There's two sections to this application. The one I'm on right now uh, is this right icon right down here at the bottom left corner. Um, this is kind of the, uh, the map slash route slash in route um, page. Um, at the top of the screen here is where you can in insert your origin airport, destination airport, and alternates, as well as a route, um, and it will put that on the screen. Um, I've inserted a little dummy flight from Raleigh to Teterboro because I know the route pretty well. Um, unfortunately, one downfall of this app is it does not let you insert uh, departure and arrival procedures into the route. Um, if, if I wanted to, for example, put the JK3 arrival into my route, I would have to look at the chart and then literally insert the procedure waypoint by waypoint, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm hoping they change that. Um, you can do airways. So, like, for example, you can see I've got, you know, uh, the Raleigh VOR Victor 3 to Flat Rock, and that's normally where we would join the JK arrival. Um, but instead, I have it just going direct to the airport then. You can see it shows it on the map, uh, the whole route there. Uh, standard Apple controls, you know, uh, one finger slide to the pan, and then uh, two fingers to zoom. Um, the app does automatically declutter um, as you zoom out, and then adds more information as you zoom in, so that's kind of nice. Uh, you can turn on uh, different features over here on the side, whether you want to see airports, airways, um, intersections, VORs, airspace, or terrain. Uh, you can turn them on and off as, as you please. Um, one potential downside for uh, for people flying bug smashers um, is that it's a tough time getting to MEAs easily. Um, you really have to zoom way far in to, to see an MEA. Uh, if you're not zoomed that far in, um, because it declutters, um, you have to tap and hold on that airway segment, select which one you want. Like for example, you know, in this case, if I was going away from Raleigh, I'd be in the northeast airway segment, and then it would bring up and show you you've got a 9,000 foot MEA, um, and you'd have to do that segment by segment uh, on that airway, which is kind of a pain. Um, we don't really deal with that that much, and the jet's going up high. Um, every once in a while it becomes an issue, but it's it's not uh, very prevalent for us. The other sort of half of the application is um, what is normally included in JEP's TC app, which is terminal charts. Um, and that's this left icon down here at the bottom left. And uh, that's where you can access, in my case, since I've got the subscription for the lower 48 uh, terminal charts for lower 48. Um, it brings up this little pop-up, which gives you uh, three different buttons at the bottom, all airports, route airports, and favorites. Um, I just have a bunch of airports listed in there as, as favorites, and um, you can tap on any one of those and get to the charts for that airport quickly. Um, or you can search for all airports. Uh, like I said, all, all of the charts for the entire 48 states, uh, <laughs> lower 48, not the entire 48, but the lower 48, um, are loaded on the iPad. It's not going out to the internet and, and pulling these down. So I can I can search through any airport as obscure as anything might be, and find the charts for that. 
One of my favorite airports ever, Whiskey 24, Falwell Airport, Lynchburg, Virginia. Flew out of there a lot. And, uh, love that airport. They've only got one approach, um, for good reason if you've ever been to Falwell. If not, I highly suggest looking it up. Um, but that's how you would search for a, an airport and then just tap on the chart you want to get to to get to it. Um, one sort of uh, interesting thing they did was uh, for bigger airports, you know, when there's tons and tons of charts, it's kind of a pain to sift through and find the chart that you want. Uh, that goes for paper charts as well as a list like this on the iPad. Um, so they they did do a good job in enabling you to to get to groups. Um, for example, if I went to uh, Dulles, K-I-A-D, tap on that airport, you can see there are a ton of charts available for Dulles. Um, you can go through here and, and find the one you need fairly easily, but they've done a good thing in, in letting you get to groups right here. So if I tap on groups, and it gives you the option of choosing reference, arrival, approach, taxi, and departure charts, um, which makes it kind of easy to get to those. Um, it, I think it'd be nice if they defaulted to this group view instead of uh, just giving you a big, huge list. Um, especially if, you know, maybe if there's more than X amount of charts for an airport, if it defaulted to group view. But personal opinion. Um, so if I wanted to see the, uh, let's say an ILS, the one right at Dulles, um, I could select approach. Oop, miss hit. Approach, and then, um, here's the ILS or localizer one right, and you can see it's just a JEP chart. Um, zoomable PDF, so just, you know, any, like anything else on the iPad, you can pinch to zoom, um, and then pan around with one finger. Very easy to get around. And uh, you've got a little bit of, of uh, navigation here at the bottom to get to other charts, um, if you know the number. But uh, the easiest thing to do if you're looking for another specific chart is to just go back to that menu there um, that we were at before. So that's a quick look at JEP FD. Um, I have not used it in the airplane yet. Uh, we'll see how easy it is. One other downside I've, I've found with this is that... Um, if you go to to rotate the iPad, to uh, it will do landscape form. Uh, I've got it in portrait now, but it will do landscape. But it takes forever to actually do it. I mean, by forever, I mean more than instantaneous. Um, it just it's kind of slow to to rotate, um, which is kind of puzzling. I'm not really sure why it would do that, but. Um, that's just a little quirk of the program, I guess, but overall, I like it so far. Um, like I said, I prefer Jeffers and Charts, um, so it's kind of nice to be able to, to view those on the iPad. But um, that's a quick look at JEPFD. I'll be kind of uh, experimenting with this and, and using it and trying it out over the next few uh, few months and coming up with a little training program for for our pilots. Um, on how to use an iPad and, and how to, to use this app. Um, so, you expect to see future updates on, uh, on JEP FD.